Before going into strength in mechanical analysis and simulation, let's first have a look of how strength is measured in a testing lab for a real experiment. This will help us to understand the nature of strength. Besides, engineers are often given lab data for material deformation and for evaluating material status. So in a testing lab, one common way to measure strength of a specimen is to use strength gauge. The gauge is attached to the object. As the object is deformed, the foil of the strength gauge is deformed, causing its electrical resistance to change, so that strength is detected and reported. Note that the reported strength is an average value over the strength gauge area, and there are different sizes of strength gauge to use for different situations. In one test, using different size of strength gauge, you might get different strength values. Strength is local. Each material point over the body has its own strength value. Ideally, if there is an extremely small strength gauge, it can report the accurate local value. But in real life, there is always a size for the strength gauge, so what is reported will be an average strength. Let's move forward to the definition of strength. First of all, let's think of deformation instead of strength for now. How is deformation defined? As we know, deformation is measured by subtracting the original shape from the deformed shape. Deformation is unique. No matter at what condition, to calculate deformation, this is the way to go. However, for strength, the definition of it is not unique. There are various of strength definition, and each of them has its own feature and purpose. Here, we'll use the uniaxial tensor test to explain one-dimensional strength. The uniaxial tensor test is one of the most commonly used tests in lab. A metal sample is held fixed on one end and stretched from the other end. The original length of the sample is L0. With the stretching, the length is increased by delta L. Eventually, the metal sample will break, and before that, we can see naked. But our discussion here is limited to uniform tensor deformation far before any failure happens. The statement of this mechanical problem can be represented by this sketch with fixed boundary conditions and a displacement control on the top. As I mentioned before, strength definition is not unique. Imagine that if you were a pioneer in mechanics, how would you define strength for the reaction tensor test? The key is to use this quantity to describe the distortion of the body, giving the original length and the change of length. How about define the strength at the ratio between change of the length and the, origin, the original length, or the ratio between the total deformed length to the original length, or how about the natural logarithm of the first idea? Are these all valid strength definitions? In fact, although strength does not have a unique definition, there are some base rules when defining a strain measurement. Rule number one is, as a strain measurement, when there is no deformation, the strain value should be absolutely zero. So when the part of the body is remained undeformed, the strain quantity should read as zero. Rule number two is, for all many strain measurements, when deformation is very small, the strain values from different strain measurements should be very close to each other. So for small deformation problem, we expect same or very similar strength value, no matter which strength definition is used. Keep these two rules in mind, you might find your own strength definition.